Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Thursday, March 28th, and then we'll see how things look for Monday, April 1st. First of all, I just want to say a happy Easter to all of you. If you are of the Christian faith, as I am, this is a very important day. So I hope that as I record this, it's Good Friday, and you have a, a good, good Friday. How's that? And that you also have a very happy Easter, or some people refer to this as Resurrection Day. Also, please note that there is a video on the YouTube channel and the Rumble channel talking about a proposed program that I'm hoping to launch right around June or so. I do have additional videos that I will be putting out. I might get a chance to do that over the extended weekend to make at least one more video, maybe even more. We'll see how that goes. But feel free to check that out. See if it's something that interests you. If you have any questions, I'm trying to address things in the videos. So if you do have a question, it may be answered at some point. Let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a positive open. It was a really slow day. It was the day before a holiday. And after we opened, we were slightly positive, and we just chopped sideways. As the day went on, we saw a little bit of a blip later on in the day. We rose back above R1, or got to R1 at 52.61. But then pretty quickly, we came back down, and we went into the top end of that sideways range that we were in before the little upward move happened. We were up 0.11% on below average volume. Not a real surprise. We are positive with our technicals. We're showing good momentum. We are a little bit concerned because growth is starting to a little bit more consistently underperform value. Now, the market can still go up and the indexes can still do well. And on the positive side, this shows more broad market participation. But in a real solid upward move with some strength underneath it, the S&P likes it when growth is outperforming value, but we'll take it as we can if you're more positive on the market. And things are looking really good right now, but we're going to be coming into a new quarter, a new month, a new week. Usually the first trading day of April is positive that I'll go over later on, but then we might see a little bit of downward move after that, but We'll just have to evaluate that if and when that even actually happens. And it's about inflation and interest rates. And there was some more to be dealt with in Thursday's session with, with GDP coming out. And then in Friday's session, and I'm not quite sure how to do this. I'm probably going to include it in one of the weekend videos because I'll get the PCE price information after or before I actually record those videos. So if you watch those videos, I should cover that at that point. Some comments that we can make, and this is, <laughs> I, I haven't had to change this. Even though we were up not very much, we were up. The S&P did set another all-time high, and small caps are seeing some favor right now. Not really breaking out at this point, but they are showing some improvement. This is kind of the last holdout area of the market that really has yet to take off on a short-term basis. Pretty much the same list. The CCI 14 is now back on the list, but we have the 20 period exponential moving average, the Stoke RSI, that's new on the list too. The Williams percent R has been there. As I said, the CCI 14 and the 20 and our stochastics chart. Intermediate term, we have the 50 period moving average study. We're still kind of up there in that plus three standard deviations channel. The rate of change based on 50 periods, the Arun indicator, that's new on the list. We're keeping an eye on the oscillators, which are still pretty much flatlining, but looking extreme when you take their readings all together. The Sean Trend Meter, the bullish percent index, which is still holding up for right now. The boom indicator based on 50 periods. Also note that the boom indicator on 20 periods is not on the short-term list. And then our longer-term 10-period new high, new low study for the S&P. Long term, we're still looking, again, you could say overextended. You could say this is showing good momentum. When we look at the 150 and 200 period simple moving averages and also the exponential moving average for the 200 period S&P, 
This is the current scenario. Now, Jerome Powell is also going to be speaking on Friday as well. And the first chance that the market will really have to react to this is going to be Sunday afternoon or evening. It'll be evening East Coast time when the futures open. And it, that could be either positive, negative, or pretty much a yawner. We'll just see how that goes. But it does look like the Fed is done raising rates. That's pretty much the stance right now. And the last that we heard is that there's the possibility of at least or in the current information that we had that they may cut rates three times in 2024. The dollar was up and interest rates were up. We it didn't change. We were we rounded down after Wednesday's session. It was closer to the 4.19. Well, then we had to round up to 4.20 for the 10-year yield. And the 10 to the two and the 10 to the three month, these yield curves have been inverted now for going on a couple of years, a year and a half to two years. And this is what we're going to be watching. If they go back to looking normal, this begins the countdown to see if we're going to go into a recession. Sentiment did tick up. We're below that 75 level, so we're not extreme, but we did close at 71 where we had been at 70. Our trend is still positive, but the ADX is just kind of drifting lower and it's still pretty much below its moving average. It looked like maybe things were starting to improve there. Even though we have been going up, there hasn't been an awful lot of real solid movement. All of these moves that we've been seeing have been well under 1% moves, but we're still in a trending environment, <clears throat> even though it's a weakening environment since we are above 20 with the ADX. The bias is positive and our momentum is positive. The economic reports that came out, this was the other day that we got kind of a longer list. Weekly jobless claims came out at 210,000. That's a little bit less than the 213,000. Last time we had 212,000. So this is showing that there's not an awful lot of people that are filing for first time unemployment. Continuing claims did tick up a bit to 1.819 million. Last week, it was 1.795 million. Then we had the third estimate of fourth quarter GDP, it actually ticked up and the market liked this. It's like, okay, the economy is still humming along with that Goldilocks type attitude. We came in at 3.4%, more than the 3.2% that they had expected, which is what we had last time. And the deflator actually ticked down a little bit. The market also liked this where it came in at 1.6%. They expected 1.7%. Last time it was at 1.6%. The Chicago PMI came out at 41.4. That's weaker than the 45.4 they had expected and down from the 44 that we saw last time. Consumer sentiment, the final reading, a little stronger than was expected at 79.4, which the market tends to take this as more positive. They had expected 76.5, which is what we had last time with the initial or preliminary reading. Pending home sales were up, but less than expected at 1.6%. They expected them to be up 2.1%. Last time they were down 4.7%. Here are some charts. Here's the weekly jobless claims. The black line is just the raw number that we get where it's declining and we're starting to roll over now with the four week simple moving average. The blue line is what we really follow to see more of a trend of what's going on. Here are continuing claims, which did go up, and we are seeing a little bit of an increase here. So on one side, we're declining. On this side, we're actually increasing a little bit. Here's everything taken together with the latest unemployment rate. And here's more of a blow up of that same chart showing where everything is at to kind of give you a visual perspective. Here's the real GDP. This takes inflation into account and the deflator. This is quarter over quarter where we're above zero, even though it did decline with both the blue line and the yellow line. But the market seems to like this. And then personal consumption came up just a little bit and it's above zero. And then exports are also increasing a little bit. And then we look at real GDP year over year, it is continuing to go up, at least in the latest rating. And that just shows an expanding economy. The Chicago PMI is decreasing over a period of time where it's going down a little bit, but this is more regional for more of the Midwest. Here's consumer sentiment. We look at the blue line, which is the total reading. And then we have the present, which is the purple line. And people are looking a little happier here. 
The yellow line is also what do they feel about the future? And that's also showing a little bit of an improvement. Then here are pending home sales on a year over year basis where they did decline, but less than what we saw last time. And I have another chart of consumer sentiment to show you later. This is a valuation model, and I'm likely to show this in the intermarket analysis video over the weekend put out by Real Investment Advice. And this is just showing CAPE, C-A-P-E, developed by Robert Schiller, which is more of a smooth method for looking at historical earnings. When it gets up into this red area, that means that we're over 20. And we've been over 20 for a long time, pretty much since, uh, was this, 2008, when we finally bounced up out of the great financial crisis and then started going higher. And we're getting a fairly high reading right now. But this can last, and it has lasted now for a long time. So we don't really make decisions around this, but we just want to be aware of it at the same time. Then this is from Yahoo Finance. The S&P 500 is up five months straight. What happens next? When you look out a month, we are positive by being up 1%. Three months is up, six months are up, and then 12 months from now, we look to be up as well. Then this is looking at another version of the presidential cycle, and we're honing more in on April itself, where it's up more than it's down. So it's up 58.3% of the time, but then we end up having a negative return for the actual month of April. And you can kind of put that into context of other months that we see. Financial conditions, when this is going up, that means the conditions are getting tighter. It's harder to borrow. Interest rates are usually going up. And it just is harder overall. Well, this has been coming down and it's showing that the conditions index is decreasing. And then I think I just found one chart here. This is um, the S&P record high closing highs by quarter from 1953 up till now, where we've had 39.3, the highest percent age of record highs since the first quarter of 2013. So this is also showing solid strength in the market in a longer term, bigger picture. Oh, and then I have this chart too, to show you just the cycles. This is a week old now when I took a screenshot of this, where we were closing at an all-time high, where it looked like we were going sideways. And we're kind of seeing that to a degree. Yeah, we're going up, but we're not really seeing any explosive growth right now. And then right around the 10th or so of April, according to these cycles, we might see a decline here and then a bit of a bounce up before we see some weakness in the latter part of May. Here's our intraday chart where we did have a higher open, but it was pretty much flat, but positive. And we just danced along above the unchanged level pretty much for the whole session. Saw a little bit of a blip up. We got above R1, but then came right back down below it at the high end of this range by the time of the close. Intraday, not an awful lot. We're closed now for the weekend and prices will, or the futures will open up again Sunday afternoon or evening. This is one area, a little bit of a concern. We're still going up. The market can still go up when this happens, but we're seeing the red line above the blue line as value has been outperforming growth on an intraday basis. And we're seeing the ratio going down on an intraday basis. When we look at the S&P, we're actually dropping below this recent range that we've been in. We want to keep an eye on this. And then our end of day charts, we were down with growth where we were up with value with the large caps. We were up, but up less with the mid caps and up more with the small caps. So we are declining when we look at our small cap growth to value ratio after it had really spiked up. And then we were in a range it's starting to show a little bit of weakness here. And I'll go through this again when I get to the small cap chart, but we were kind of breaking out. We actually broke above that on an intraday basis, and we're breaking out a little bit on a closing basis too. And then we look at mid cap growth to value, which has been stronger. The index has been holding up a lot better, but we did decrease here with our ratio. And we're also decreasing with S&P growth to value on the end of day chart, but we're still in a longer term uptrend. Here's large cap versus small caps, showing just how the large caps, as measured here by the Russell 1000, I have a new chart of this right after this to, to show you. And then we compare that with the Russell 2000, which are the small caps. When this is going up, that means the large caps are outperforming. And here's that same chart, but now I'm going to start including that, and I'll probably 
put this over into the intermarket analysis growth to value studies that I do, where we're coming down a little bit, showing that the small caps have been showing some improvement, but overall the longer term trend just confirms what we kind of already know, that large caps have been outperforming small caps. Discretionary, yeah, tick down just a little bit. When we look at discretionary by itself, it's in a pretty good uptrend and looking fairly solid, but we're also seeing staples doing quite well now too. So when we look at the ratio between them, we're not really breaking out, even though in the longer term, discretionary is still outperforming the staples. Long term or large cap growth, we were down just a little bit, but we're just coming off of setting recent all-time highs. Here's our trend. We're just flatlining now with the ADX. We're, we go a little bit above the moving average, a little bit below it, but there's really no decisiveness as to a conviction behind the trend. We turned back up slightly with the green line, so we still default to positive. We're still above 20, so we are in a trending environment, but a weakening trending environment as we're seeing the ADX just drifting lower. Short term, also, pretty much on top of the moving average, green line going up, drifting lower, even in the short-term trend, as far as the strength, we are dropping down below average, and we've been seeing that pretty much all week. And then this will, on the weekly charts, also show up as below average because of the one less trading day. This was updated a few days ago, <clears throat> where the investor's intelligence, it really got up above four. Now it's coming back down and it's at 3.99. So still rather extreme. We are turning back up just a little bit with the VIX when we look at the line chart and the bar chart, but we have broken the series of higher lows that we've been setting pretty much since the beginning of December. So this is just showing that overall fear has been decreasing and we're getting a very low reading with the VIX of the VIX, just showing that there's not a lot of volatility in the market right now. And this, even though this, this sounds a little bit contradictory, this could be what's called a volatility squeeze. When we get really, really low with volatility, because it's going to break out one way or the other. Now, usually when we mean volatility squeeze, that could really pick up if we go to the downside. Since the VIX goes up when stocks go down, we'll just have to wait to see if that's what happens. The SKU index is still giving us a pretty extreme reading. They're also concerned about things. They're expecting some kind of a move, and we're not quite sure. Is that going to be to the upside or to the downside? Now, this is a three-day weekend. It's also, there There have been some reports coming out of Europe of threatening terrorist attacks. Of course, something like that could happen in the U.S. as well, because it's a, a Christian holiday, and this could we always have to be aware of these things. And this why maybe why we're seeing a little bit of extra hedging going into the weekend and a little bit of cautiousness. We did see a decline still with the momentum of the VIX. As we've been going up, the VIX has been trailing off. We, we really came down. We didn't see hedging here. The equity put call ratio really fell off as people were not buying more puts than calls. And we're continuing to decline with our five period simple moving average. So this is positive as well. We had the latest reading of the American Association of Individual Investors. They did improve over the previous week and they're not necessarily extreme right now. Here's the other sentiment chart. The blue line is what we've been measuring and we are seeing some gradual improvement. We also plot the two year yield here, which has also been going back up lately. So there's still quite a wide spread between these two but they tend to move in the same general direction. And we're, we're waiting to see if, if they're gonna start moving in that direction. Here's the volatility risk premium. We ticked up a little bit, but we're still within this band right now. We're not getting an extreme up or down reading currently. Advanced decline line, we are breaking out, looking solid when you take all of the S&P together and look internally. And we're also breaking out based on volume. So this is looking quite healthy, even though it did decline from the previous day's reading. We're also looking healthy with the new highs. With a little bit of an upward move that we saw, we saw a real expansion in the new highs. Really no new lows. We're pegged at the top with the five period and we're going up with the 10 period. So this other internal measure is looking solid. We're also looking solid with our advanced decline ratio. Accumulation distribution did turn down just a little bit. We're just barely below the moving average. And the chicken money flow is also continuing to trail off. So, but 
the previous chart, accumulation distribution and chicken money flow. These are supposed to be smart money indicators, and they also take volume into account. And because we've been seeing volume really trailing off, that may mean a lot of the smart money and the big institutions are not really coming in and buying. And so that's why we've been seeing these indicators fall off a bit. The chicken oscillator did tick up, but we're still below zero. So that is negative. But looking at the NYSE cumulative advanced decline line, we were up and looking pretty solid here. When we look at our regular NYSE advanced decline line, we are really showing some more broad market improvement. Here's another NYSE advanced decline line, also looking much better. And then we look at common stock based on price on top. That's breaking out. And we're also breaking out based on volume. Here's the accumulative price for the S&P 500, also looking pretty solid, as well as volume. And we're seeing volume actually leading a little bit here. And that could be a positive sign. Looking at our advanced decline line studies, we are looking really good with NYSE common stock, the S&P, the mid caps. The small caps are showing some improvement, but have not been able to break out above the high set back in December. Here's our daily chart, and I would switch this back to a three-year view now because some of this mess may be a little bit dealt with. We have a pivot point below current prices, which is pretty much the overhead resistance that we were able to break through in March. So what had been resistance, now that we're above it, could become support if we see some weakness. We also have this R1 level that could act as overhead resistance. On the bottom, we were below average with volume. The Stoke RSI, just barely starting to get extreme positive, but it can stay this way. If we really start moving to the upside, it can camp out here for a while. And this is the second or third day now that the Williams percent R is also extreme positive, and it can stay up here for a while too. So yes, we're overextended to the upside, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the the momentum is slowing down, even though we're not seeing really big moves in the indexes right now. The CCI 14 is just barely back above zero after it had dropped off, and the CCI 20 is above 100. Did I say zero? I meant above 100 here. And then we want to keep an eye on the 20 period simple and exponential moving averages just in case we see some weakness. We want to see if that will end up being a support level. We are looking extreme with our 20, 50, and 200 period exponential moving averages just based on the price of the S&P itself. We are looking more positive even though we ticked down a little bit with the force index. We're extreme positive in the short term, intermediate short term, and long short term with our stochastics chart. And this is a further subdivision of the short term time frame. We're still just a little bit into this plus three channel. We're kind of right on the border, but... and. I'll try to point this out later on. This is not necessarily a really good looking bar that we see here. Let's see if I can point this out along the way. But the balance of power is turning back up, and but it's right back to zero after it had dropped negative. The go no go is still with the darker blue bar. So that's positive. The highest high value is still looking positive. The TTM squeeze with the lighter shade of blue, that's positive. We're not necessarily extreme with the boom indicator. When we look at the 20 period moving average, this measures how far is price away from a particular moving average. But we are a little bit far away when we look at the 50 period moving average, but we're continuing to go up and not extreme when we look at the distance from price to the 200 day moving average. And the rate of change going up just a little bit, this goes back 50 periods. I have a number of different rate of change charts. This is more intermediate to even somewhat long-term because this looks at Thursday's price and then goes back 50 periods to compare where were we 50 trading days ago. The ease of movement was pretty much flat, but it's still above zero. And the Arun indicator showed a little bit of life, and it's giving us just into this extreme positive reading when we look at the oscillator. The green line is pegged all the way at the top. That's buyers. The red line is pegged all the way at the bottom. That's sellers. The difference between the two is the oscillator. We're above zero and giving a rather extreme reading. But this can stay this way for a while if we continue to be positive. The S&P McClellan oscillator is above zero again and continuing to advance. So we're going back up with the summation index based on price. And volume is actually looking a little better here. 
The NYSE McClellan oscillator, also above zero in advancing. So we're turning back up based on price and looking a little better with the summation index based on volume for the NYSE. We're still dropping though, when we look at price with the Swinland trading oscillator, however, we're above zero. We're starting to turn back up based on volume and we're above zero. So the picture that's kind of coming out right now is volume is doing better than price at the current time. And that could be a very healthy thing. When we look at our oscillators, we're pretty much flatlining here, but we're above this red line, so we're getting an extreme reading. We're starting to ever so slightly cross back above the moving average based on price, and we're looking even better based on volume. We tick down just a little bit, but not much of a change with the PMOs that are rising. The buy signals are starting to go back up, and we're going back up and looking a, a little extreme here with the PMOs that are above zero. Maybe this will be a little easier to see with the green bar where we open and then we set a high and then closed right near the open here. That That's kind of a scary looking bar. So just the, we, we're not seeing an awful lot of movement. It was that blip up and then we came right back down by the end of the day. But when we look at the elders impulse system for the S&P, we are still positive. The parabolic SAR is positive. The slope is flattening out and right above this green line. So we're looking a little bit extreme. The MACD with the couple of updates we've seen is trying to go back above its moving average. So in the short and intermediate term, we're flatlining, but now we're leaning more on the positive side. We're flatlining in the long term and not really turning over positive yet. We're still above all the plotted moving averages in our moving average tree. The bullish percent index is above 70, but it's continuing to advance. That's positive. It's when it starts to turn down, that that's when we issue a warning. And then when it drops below 70, that's when it turns into a sell signal. The NYSE bullish percent index is continuing to go up, but this is a little bit of a concern. We've seen two days now with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index declining. That just means the mega caps are not really participating right now. However, we're still above 50 with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. So it's still positive. The money flow after going negative is now crossed back above 50 and turning more positive. We turned down with the ultimate oscillator, but we're still above 50. The vortex is turning back up, but we have been seeing this real weakening longer term with this indicator. We're still looking good with the RSI 14 and nine and not looking extreme right now. We're above an advancing moving average with on balance volume. We're showing a lot of strength there with our 20 period moving averages. Now the negative side is yeah, we're above 80% of stocks in the S&P are above their 20 day moving average. Sometimes that can mark a top, but we can camp out here for a while if we see follow through momentum. The 50 period is showing some improvement and not back up to this high level yet. So we also want to keep in mind more on the negative side, we're seeing this negative divergence where we're seeing higher price with the S&P, but lower readings here with this study. But longer term with the 100 period moving averages, we're still looking good, but this is looking rather extreme right now. And we're also looking extreme, but yet positive with our 200 period moving average study. The copy curve is still flatlining right now. And is it above? Is it below? Take your pick. The Sean trend meter is still extreme positive, even though it turned down slightly. So on a trending basis, the hike in ASHI is positive with open candles. We're up and black with the Keggy chart. That's positive. The Ranko chart is positive, And the three-line break chart is also positive. Then we're still at the underside of this trend line. Now, even though we've been going up, the trend line's going up too, and we haven't been able to close above this, but we're still looking positive when you look at this, even though we're below this blue trend line. And we're above this R1 level way back, seems like ancient history now, where we closed at 52.54. Well, this R1 level's at 51.10 to 51.11. So we're starting to get some space above this resistance level. And it presented a problem for a while, and we were keeping a close eye on that, but now things are starting to switch back more positive. Longer term with our 150 and 200, we are looking extreme and quite extreme, but this is showing good long-term momentum. And we're still positive with the Keller market model across all the different indexes and all the different timeframes. And I think I had the wrong version of this chart. When we look at the S&P with the decision point scorecard, their trend models are all positive. We're positive with the PMO signals in the short and intermediate term. We're still negative in the long term. 
and Canada, boy, they're just partying away up there. Um, all kinds of TSX signals that are being generated here. Oh, Canada. We saw a few negatives, which could be a positive if you're more bullish on the dollar. The euro had a movie average crossover there. And that's because we've been seeing some strength in the dollar and utilities, which continue to be under a lot of pressure. They cross below 50 with their bullish percent index. The equal weight is still doing as good, if not a little bit better than the weighted S&P 500 index. So we're coming down with our ratio as the mega caps have not been doing as well lately and the broader market has been doing better. The Dow hasn't really broken out here, but we're still above this pivot point and in a solid uptrend. And the elders impulse system for the diamonds is still positive. The NASDAQ, and I was hoping now that we're getting over into April that this would look a little clearer. We have a pivot level below current price, and we also have an R1 level above current price. We'll be seeing if those come into play as the month of April unfolds. We're also seeing that same thing, a pivot level below an R1 level above with the NASDAQ 100. And we continue to be neutral with the QQQs when looking at the Elder's Impulse system. We're still more negative here with the momentum of the NASDAQ 100 as we've been just drifting lower with this momentum oscillator. Now, this is moving average base, so it can't help but trend lower as we've been not seeing as much strength in the NASDAQ 100, even though we're coming off of setting recent all-time highs. The QQQs, though, this is the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, continues to be solid, and we're above the 20-period moving average. Small caps, this is, we're trying to break out. And it looks like we're breaking out on a closing basis. We actually set a little bit higher intraday level. So, and this is the area that a lot of people are wondering, okay? All the other areas of the market have been really solid. What about the small caps? If we're in a lower interest rate environment, the economy's still looking good. Other parts of folks' portfolios are doing really well. Why not venture into the small caps? And we're wondering if we're going to see some follow through there. With the Elder's Impulse System for the small caps, we are positive. But this is also kind of a scary looking bar. We closed more near the bottom. But when we look at the Russell 2000, we're above 50 and advancing with the RSI. Longer term, we're in an uptrend. The momentum in the shorter term is turning back to positive. But this is kind of a scary looking bar to open, go up, and then come back down and close about where we opened. The mid caps close more in the midpoint of their daily bar here, but we're still above this pivot level and showing more strength. We continue to be positive with the Elder's Impulse system for the mid caps. Apple is still in a downtrend and was down over a percent as it's battling some legal issues now. Tesla was down over 2% and continues to be in a downtrend. And this is what's dragging down the NASDAQ 100 a bit here. NVIDIA was barely unchanged up. I mean, 0.2%. That's like, or 0.12%. That's almost like a NVIDIA should have stayed home on Thursday. We have not been able to break out above this intraday high that we set right after the earnings report came out. And we're wondering if this is going to see some more strength. And we're seeing a lot of sideways action now because it's become cool to invest in NVIDIA. You've got people that don't know what they're doing, downloading apps to their phones and saying, I'm buying NVIDIA. I heard of it. It's great. They don't know anything about the stock. They don't understand the technology. They just heard from their friends that it's going to the moon. And so they're getting into it. And so it's not surprising that we are seeing sideways action at best. If we start to see a decline, that's usually to wash out a lot of the weak hands or the folks that try to use the stock market like a cash machine. Anyway. All right, we are still going pretty much sideways, but at the higher end of the range with the FANG index, the financial sector was up over half a percent and continues to be pretty solid. The dollar is continuing to go up and we've just seen a recent golden cross here on the daily chart. We're seeing a bit of an improvement with the 10 period correlation when we compare the S&P to the world index. So that's showing more of a correlated relationship and longer term, we're also seeing the 50 period correlation continuing to go up, meaning that the world stocks are mirroring what they're seeing in the S&P 500. We did go up just slightly with the 10-year based on yield, and we came down slightly with the 10-year based on price. And then this is where we are seeing some warning signs, not freak out warning signs, just things that we want to be aware of, where the QQQs continue to underperform the S&P. 
This is more of a growth to value type of a measure. Discretionary is coming back up to its moving average, but the moving average itself is declining, and we're seeing large cap dropping off when compared to large cap. Or, okay, let me try that again. We're seeing large cap growth underperforming large cap value on a ratio basis. So with the large caps, mid caps, and small caps, we're seeing value outperforming growth or growth is underperforming value. We're still looking solid here with our five period moving average of the highs minus the lows across the Amex, NASDAQ, and NYSE. Also just a longer term measure for the S&P 500, the 10 day average of the highs minus the lows. We've been camped out in extreme positive territory pretty much for all of 2024. We did see a little bit of a dip down, but other than that, that's, this is when we hit, when CPI came out and kind of freaked the market out. Well, we quickly got that back. And this is also suggesting there's good momentum in the market. So what's our outlook for Monday? We're positive with our technicals. I'm taking seasonality out for right now because we're just not really following that. Now, at any time, we'll come back into that. But for the month of March, we just, we really deviated from what seasonally usually happens. We're seeing more of a broad-based move in the market right now, but on the negative side, growth is underperforming. We'll see if that switches at some point. And then Friday, we are going to get PCE prices and core PCE, and I'll probably report in that in the weekend videos. And then on Monday, we're going to get construction spending. The big one is going to be ISM manufacturing. That's another pretty influential report. We do want to be aware of the geopolitical events. There's everything that's listed on here. Plus, we have the holiday weekend where there's already been some threats throughout Europe. And we don't know if something's going to happen or not. In the upcoming week, we're going to get ADP employment on Wednesday. And then the big jobs report is going to come out on Friday. And then here's another look at the upcoming week and the different economic reports that will be coming out. Seasonally, we are positive for the 1st of April. We're positive across the board with the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ. Oh, and I need to go back here. Where we had an up January, and we follow 72.6% of the time, almost three quarters of the time. Whatever happens in January during a presidential election year, that's what the market tends to follow. And so January was positive. It was up 1.6%. And then when that happens, we tend to see about a 20% return by the end of the year. Now, we are coming into the last of the best six months. And this ends when we get to the end of April. There's this old idea, you know, buy or sell in May and go away. Well, that's been disproven as much as a cliche that seems to work. But looking over the last 74 years, we're up in April 72% of the time. We're down 28% of the time. I'll go over the options expiration data when we get closer. And then here is the first trading day where we do see a little bit of positive seasonality, the green dash line for the S&P during an election year. And we're coming into April now where we're, we never really went through this downward slope of seasonality. We're wondering, are we going to make up for that or are we going to go back into a time of positive seasonality and this is just showing how we've deviated away the green line this is a few days old now where it's going up the black line is what seasonally happens during a presidential election year and how far away we are between the two this is also showing that as well just this is what normally happens the red line is what has actually happened Monday tends to be the most positive day of the week, at least according to what happened in 2023. April tends to be positive, whether it's since 1950, the past 20 years, 10 years, or just during an election year. The warning signs, the chicken money flow and the chicken oscillator are negative. Now, the chicken oscillator ticked back up, but it's still below zero. I'm more concerned with this chicken money flow, and it's been drifting lower for a while now. We do have the negative divergences just to be aware of. And I've changed this from discretionary to the S&P to the discretionary to staples ratio to the S&P. We want to see that doing better than it has been. And then longer term of the transports to both the Dow and the S&P. I'll go over that in the weekend videos. We're still negative when we look at the momentum for the NASDAQ 100. Positive. We're going down with the five period equity put call ratio. The parabolic SAR is positive. The vortex, even though it's weakening, is still positive. 
We're still above 50 with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index, but we've seen a couple of down days now. Small and mid cap growth are positive, but now that we're getting in danger of dropping below that range that we've been in, large cap growth is holding up, but it has been underperforming at least over the last few trading sessions. But the financial sector continues to be positive. So our conclusion, we are positive. It's more of a broad-based positive reaction to things or how price is acting anyway. But growth is underperforming. That's what we're watching in the short term. We're also above this shorter term resistance that we were able to get above in March. And then that longer term, the weekly chart, we're still above that. And I'm still calling it resistance for right now. The further out we get, it may end up becoming support. Intermediate term, we're also above that longer overhead resistance. We are extreme positive, but that could also suggest good momentum. We're also seeing that same thing in the long term where we continue to be positive. I hope you have a really good day. I hope you have a very happy holiday weekend, and I will talk to you in the next video.